Our world has been held in the grip of a pandemic, but humans are not the only ones suffering from global diseases on the rise. For Australian plants, their pandemic story began 10 years ago. Known as myrtle rust, this fungal disease came to Australia by unknown means in 2010 and is infecting and destroying many of our native plants. At most risk are plants from the myrtle family, including well-loved Australians such as lily pillies, tea trees and native guavas. For some of these species, this disease could mean the end. But a dedicated group of scientists working collaboratively across states are committing their lives to save our flora. Will they be able to save them in time? This is the story of the angle-stemmed myrtle. I'm Tamara Taylor, I'm an ecologist. Today we're in the Gold Coast hinterland looking at uh, the endangered species Scotia gonoclata. I've been studying the health of this species in southeast Queensland for about seven years. Gossia gonoclata is a small tree that can grow to around 12 metres in height. When I'm identifying Gossia gonoclata in the field, there's a couple of things I check on. The first is the combination of bark, colour and texture and the leaf characteristics. In younger trees, the bark's a grey-brown colour with vertical fissures. However, as they become older, the bark ages and comes away in elongated chunks that reveal a browny red um, smoother colour underneath. Once I've found a bark that looks about right, I move on to the leaves, which are a lovely glossy green colour. In the new growth, they can be a brighter, lighter green and also pink. Having a closer look at the small branchlets at the tips of the branches, you may see that the stem is almost square in shape. You might see an edge or what is sometimes referred to as a wing. This is the shape that gives this species the common name, the angle-stemmed myrtle. The flowers are white and around the size of a thumbnail and have a lot of stamens which give it a fluffy look. The flowers are very similar to other Matesi species though, as are the black glossy fruits that they produce. So far, this species has only ever been found in southeast Queensland. The trees that have been found are located on the Brisbane and the Logan rivers and some of their tributaries, but recently some have been found on the Gold Coast hinterland, which is where we are right now. Generally, naturally occurring Gossia gonoclata trees are found near creeks and rivers. We don't really know the entire reason why Gossia gonoclata has such a small population and only occurs in southeast Queensland. Given that genetic analysis of the remaining population has determined these trees are quite genetically diverse, it's been suggested that they were actually much more common in this region at some point. So what happened? The best answer we can come up with at the moment is that they could be relics of a previous climate. Perhaps this region was much wetter in the past and the population only remains in pockets as a last refuge. After being originally described in the late 1800s, Gossia gonoclata was previously thought to be extinct after mass clearing on the Brisbane River in the early 1900s. Fortunately, while walking around a property in Logan City in the 1980s, local botanists discovered a small population. This led to further searches in Logan and Brisbane and a few more trees were found. Because of the small number, the species was eventually listed as endangered under federal and state government legislation so that they could be protected. To make matters worse, an invasive fungal pathogen called myrtle rust arrived in 2010. In the last 10 years, many of the trees have proven to be quite susceptible to the disease caused by this pathogen, which can kill off all the new growth in some individuals. Some trees have died and others are just hanging on. Hi, I'm Dr. Louise Shuey and I'm a forest pathologist with the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries in the Queensland Government. I'm here today at the Queensland Biosciences Precinct at the University of Queensland. Uh, this is the home of COFI, which is the Queensland Alliance for Agriculture and Food Innovation. This is a collaboration between the University of Queensland and the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. The work that I do in Brisbane is looking at the impact that myrtle rust is having on our vulnerable plant communities. Some people think that myrtle rust only infects little seedlings, but what we've seen, older trees and disturbed areas that have young flush or new growth can also be affected as well. In fact, if some of these species are removed, it can change whole ecosystems. So most people know myrtle rust because it's that really distinctive bright yellow spore. This yellow spore stage is how myrtle rust generally spreads. It can travel on the wind and it can travel quite far distances. It can then land on the younger parts of the plant, infect into 
through the leaf and then it begins its life cycle again, producing more spores, building up more inoculum and spreading further. As part of some of my work at DAF, we are looking at collaborating with the University of Queensland to look at some more innovative solutions for those plants that don't have any natural resistance. Hi, my name's Dr Alice Hayward. I'm in the group of Professor Nina Mitter here at the Queensland Alliance for Agriculture and Food Innovation at the University of Queensland. And I'm in our tissue culture lab at the moment. We work with Dr Karen Somerville and her colleagues at the Australian Plant Bank in Mount Annan and we're working on Gossier species conservation. So these are some jars of Gossia fragrantissima that Karen has sent us. Uh, this is a related species to Gonoclata that's also at risk of population loss. So cryopreservation is the storage and later revival of living tissues at minus 196 degrees centigrade. This is done using liquid nitrogen tanks where samples can be kept and conserved indefinitely. You might have heard of this for freezing human embryos or sperm or eggs for IVF, but many people don't realise the same is possible for plants. In fact, plants are especially awesome at this because we can take almost any part of a plant, freeze it and regenerate a whole new copy or clone of that plant. So this kind of technology is really powerful for preservation of important crop species that we rely on for food, as well as our beautiful wild Australian flora that are at risk of extinction. This means that we have a safe and secure store of a species protected from climate change, human impacts, weather disasters such as storms and even disease pandemics such as the myrtle rust. So the work we do in cryopreservation acts as kind of an insurance policy for conservation of these really threatened plants. Hi, I'm Dr Anne Sawyer. I'm an Advanced Queensland Research Fellow here at the University of Queensland. The Middle Lab first started working on RNAi vaccines back in 2012 with funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The original targets were actually plant viruses and their insect vectors. And it was only a few years ago that we started targeting fungal pathogens. And my work on the myrtle rust RNAi vaccine started last year. RNAi vaccines function by triggering a conserved molecular defense mechanism known as RNA interference or RNAi. And this has been used previously to create genetically modified crops that are disease resistant. In the GM approach, a piece of pathogen DNA is integrated into the plant's genome. It then produces double-stranded RNA against the respective pest or pathogen. This is seen as foreign by the plant and it's chopped up into small pieces of RNA. When that pest or pathogen then invades the plant, they take up these small pieces of RNA. And these pieces of RNA, which are homologous to the target pathogen gene, then can degrade or silence that gene, which inactivates the pest or pathogen and makes the plant resistant. In the vaccine approach, instead of integrating DNA into the plant, like the GM method, we directly spray double-stranded RNA onto the plant and this triggers the same RNA interference mechanism, but the plant is not genetically modified. Therefore, we're quite optimistic that RNA vaccines will be effective against myrtle rust and be able to protect endangered species such as Gossia gonoclata. I've been surveying myrtle rust on the Gossia gonoclata trees within Logan City over the last seven years. And although some of the trees are susceptible to myrtle rust, there are some that seem to indicate that they're more resistant. My research indicates that trees that are more resistant to myrtle rust are genetically more closely related, perhaps suggesting that this could be a genetically inherited trait. This is really, really good news, as it allows us to use particular trees to propagate new plants that might be able to withstand the disease. What we need from the public is to help us find undiscovered trees so that we can evaluate whether they can be used to increase genetic diversity of future conservation activities. If you have land near rivers and creeks in South East Queensland, have a look and see if you might have one. If you think you do, send a message to the Queensland Herbarium and ask them if they can assist you with taking samples. If you love plants and you want to get involved with the endangered Gossia gonoclata, there are bush care groups in Logan City and Brisbane City that monitor the populations. Get in touch with them as they're often looking out for people who can help protect the many special species that grow in our region. Although Gossia gonoclata has had a bit of a rough trot lately, the good news is that with everyone's help we can save this species from extinction. Mm -hmm.